Welcome to the Simply Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Calandra. On today's episode, I want to talk about debt to income ratio, also known shorthand as DTI, uh, debt to income ratio. If someone told you your debt to income ratio was 25%, would you know the answer to that question? Would you even have any idea of what is meant by the question? If you don't, you're not alone and that's okay, but the purpose of today's discussion is to talk a little bit about what that is to increase your financial IQ and become familiar with this formula. And I'm a financial geek, but it seems to me that debt to income ratio seems like a pretty scary calculation, but it's really not so bad. Let's get into it a bit. Your debt to income ratio expressed as a percentage is the number you get when you take all of your monthly debts and divide it by your gross monthly income. When I say gross monthly income, I mean your income before any deductions. Your debt to income ratio is an important number. It's right up there with credit score, although it does not get the same attention that credit score does. But irregardless of that, it's very, very important. It compares the percentage of the debt you're carrying against your income. And one can argue that your debt to income ratio is a pillar of your financial health. I would argue that. And probably even more than a credit score, I think your debt to income ratio is more reflective of your financial health. It shows how much control, or maybe lack thereof, that you have over your debts. Quick illustration is if you have, let's say, $10,000 of gross income and we added up your debts, your monthly debts, and they amounted to $1,000, we would take the 1000 divided into 10000 and you would come up with a debt-to-income ratio of 10%, just using that as an example. You would like your debt-to-income ratio to be low, especially when applying for loans. I'm going to use mortgages Some underwriting is going to look at debt-to-income ratio, credit cards, student loans, but I really want to focus on mortgages. That's where this has the most presence. So when you apply for a mortgage, uh, you want to be aware of your debt-to-income ratio. You want to be aware of it because that's what underwriters are going to be keenly aware of. That's what they're going to be looking at during the underwriting process. So... Let's talk about this number. There are two calculations. There's front end and back end debt to income ratio. On the front end, it is representative of how much of your pre-tax income goes towards both a mortgage payment and other housing expenses like property taxes and insurance. And a quick guide point for you is that lenders look for front end DTI to be at 28% or lower. If you go above 28%, you're into the gray area and maybe even into an area where they would not underwrite a loan. So going back to my example, I use 25%. Most times, in most instances, 25% front-end debt-to-income ratio would be acceptable to underwriters because it's below 28%. What underwriters will view that as, they'll view it as an indication that you are not struggling to live within your means or to make regular payments. The opposite is true. If your debt to income ratio is above 28%, they will have the sense that you might be struggling to live within your means and you might have trouble making regular payments. Even if you don't have a history of it, it's just that there's too much of a strain in your budget. There's also the back-end debt-to-income ratio. The back-end DTI is more common. What that calculation does is take your monthly recurring debts and divide it by your monthly gross income. Most lenders like to see DTI ratios at or below 43%. It could vary by lenders, but that is a good rule of thumb. And what they're saying there is that if you're 43% below, there's enough slack in your budget, that there's enough income coming in relative to your reoccurring expenses, debts, that you are probably a safe risk for a loan. 
Now, again, your DTI could be beautiful. You could meet these metrics like below 43 and below 28 on both of the ratios I talked about. But if your credit score is a train wreck, well, you may not get underwritten for a loan. This is just an important component of the underwriting process, but it's not the end-all, be-all. But most people that uh, are looking at loans don't have an awareness of how crucial the debt-to-income ratio is. So what's a good or ideal debt-to-income ratio? Although it's a good question, there's no magic number. I mean, heck, if you have no debt, it's zero. And that's pretty powerful. But then again, if you have no debt, you might not be looking for a loan. But if you did and you didn't have any other debt, probably, not probably, it will be easier to get underwritten for a loan. Uh, as I said, debt to income ratio is just one factor that lenders take into consideration, but it's important. It's recommended by most underwriters that a household should not spend more than 28% of its gross monthly income on total housing expenses. What I want to finish up with is that you might have a question, does your debt to income ratio affect your credit score? And at first glance, it might seem that it would, and it's a really popular question, but the answer is no. Your debt to income ratio has no bearing on your credit score and vice versa. I mentioned before that you could have great to debt to income ratios, but if your credit score is a mess, you might not, probably won't get a loan. The opposite is also true. You could have a great credit score, uh, but your debt to income ratios may be above the 28, 36, or 43 percent numbers I spoke about. And again, you'll have a lot of difficulty in that instance getting approved for a loan. So debt to income ratio sounds scarier than it is, but I want you to be aware of it. If you're looking to get a mortgage, you want to have an idea going in what your debt to income ratio is. That'll help you in the process. And if you know it going in and you're interacting with a mortgage broker or a potential lender, you'll have an appreciation of what's important to them, how they're looking at you financially so that you could negotiate through the mortgage process a little easier. As you build wealth, as you build wealth and you earn more money, and your nest egg grows and hopefully become more affluent. This is what we help our clients do. This is the day-to-day -day work we do here at Elliott Wealth Management. You want that debt-to-income ratio over time to get lower. My debt-to-income ratio 10, 20 years ago was much higher than it is now. It's actually zero now. But you want, as you become more wealthy, for that debt-to-income ratio to go down because you have less debt and hopefully your income is increasing over time, as well as your assets to be growing. That's how you get to greater financial security. So thanks for listening to today's episode. Check out our website, ElliottWealth.com. Subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. That would be wonderful. I would appreciate it. And as always, I'll be back with you on the next episode of the Simply Financial Podcast very soon. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of Sage Point Financial Incorporated and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can assure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Please note the information being provided is strictly as a courtesy. When you link to any of the websites provided here, you are leaving this website. We make no representation as to the completeness or accuracy of the information provided at these websites, nor is the company liable for any direct or indirect technical or system issues or any consequences arising out of your access to your use of third-party technologies websites, information, and programs made available through this website. When you access one of these websites, you are leaving our website and assume total responsibility and risk for your use of the websites you are linking to. Securities and advisory services are offered through Sage Point Financial Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC, insurance services offered through Elliott Wealth Management, LLC, not affiliated with Sage Point Financial.